Hey, it's Holly. Welcome to another fall home tour here at Living a Country. Today we have Kim back from Pine Bend Home, and you guys loved her home tour last season. So she is back, and she will also be back for the Christmas season too. And I'm so, so excited and feel so honored to be sharing her home today. So without further ado, I know you guys are so excited too. So let's start today's home tour. Hey, Holly, thank you so much for having me back here again at Living It Country. It feels great to be back. My name is Kim. You can find me over at Pine Bend Home on Instagram. And I really hope that you guys will follow me along over there. As many of you guys know, fall is my favorite time of the year. So I cannot wait to show you how I've styled everything for this season. So for those of y'all coming back and those that are new, welcome to my home and I hope you guys enjoy the tour. Hey everybody, let's start this tour with taking a look at the outside. I love to garden, it's a favorite pastime of mine. On any given weekend, you will find me outside working in the yard. Down here in Texas where I live, we're in a hardiness zone nine, which means that fall for us is almost like a second spring and plants and flowers really thrive during this time of year once we get past that Texas heat that we're used to. I like to add fall touches even in my gardening with sunflowers, lots of cone flowers and oranges and reds and yellows, fresh herbs like rosemary. And I like to plant cabbages and kales. I'm really looking forward to when all of this takes off and starts to bloom even more. This home was built in 1981 and before we flooded in 19 in 2017, excuse me, we had just a simple awning on the front of the house. So one of the major renovations was adding this expansive covered porch, which adds a lot of character to a very traditional style home. Still a bit hot for us here to have too many pumpkins, but during the fall, I certainly enjoy draping the porch with pumpkins everywhere. Front porch offers a lot of shade. And even though we're on the outside, I always take the opportunity to add vintage touches. This potting table I found at Round Top many years ago. During the fall, I will plant lots of grasses. Again, ornamental kales, cabbages, ivies this is a great spot at the end of the day when the sun goes down to get out of the heat another round top find this vintage cart I originally thought that this might go on the inside of the home but it found a great spot here on the front porch. During the summer months, I like to plant fresh herbs and grow them right over there on the cart.
Having a garden like this also allows me the opportunity to cut my own flowers, make my own arrangements, which is a favorite pastime of mine. I am certainly looking forward to more and more pumpkins. All right, how about we move inside and tour the rest of the home. Y'all come inside. Hey everybody, welcome to my home. I'm so glad to be able to share this with you again. For those who followed along last fall, thank you for the overwhelming love that you showed this fall home tour. Um, I was so blown away by just the love and generosity that you showed. And for those who are tuning in for the first time, welcome. This is the entryway to my home. One thing that you're going to uh, find on this home tour is my love and passion for antiques and for restoring old items, repurposing, just um, a real connection to furniture and pieces and their story. And I love um, just the possibilities of all the places that they've traveled and how they ended up here in my home. Um, it is really something that brings me a lot of joy. As you walk into the front entryway here, you can see a new piece that I have um, that's changed since the last home tour is this beautiful French cupboard. I did get this from Round Top on the last time that I went at the spring show. I used to have a beautiful dresser from Belgium from the 1800s, and I was able to find a new home for it upstairs but this narrow French cupboard really allows the space to be opened up just a little bit more. Still able to um, have an antique mixed in with the modern element of the stair railing, a vintage mirror, a great piece of vintage art. Of course, you're gonna find throughout this home tour that I love a dark, moody aesthetic. This color on the wall is called Jasper by Sherwin-Williams. And I just love this little moment when you walk in through the front door. The stair railing is something that I designed after our home flooded from Hurricane Harvey in 2017. I think that you can actually let it become almost like a piece of art. And I like how the modern design paired with all the antiques in the entryway creates that juxtaposition between old and new. I definitely love mixing styles. You'll see as you walk around the stairs, this sweet little corner over here, where you see the shiplap wall and the hall tree mirror. This used to be an entryway to a bedroom that we didn't need to utilize as a bedroom. Instead, um, I've used it as my closet. So I was able to shut that door and opening off and make this sweet little seating area when you walk through the front door. This antique hall tree mirror is one of my favorite antique finds. It was actually gifted to me. And that's something else that I certainly enjoy about antiques is passing them along. It's extremely special to me and it looks as if it was always meant to go in this space. And it is just a place where I hang all of my hats that I wear to round top. Another thing that you will notice on this home tour is my love for vintage rugs. 
a beautiful runner here. One day I envision a vintage runner going up the stairs. The stairs are made from hand scraped knotty alder and you can see the detail here in each stair tread. Each one was handcrafted and you're going to see the use of this wood and this material throughout the home as I was able to repurpose leftover stair treads creatively throughout the home. This view from the stairs looks into a room that we like to call the reading room. This is something that has changed quite a bit from the last home tour. I can't wait to share all of those details with you. This room also is where I office when I work from home. and is probably one of the favorite rooms in the house of mine. Definitely chocked full of lots of antique treasures and finds. When we purchased the home eight years ago, it was definitely a fixer-upper. The home was built in 1981. Very traditional floor plan for the time and where you see this opening into the kitchen. This was a wall that I opened up to create more space, a better flow, something that I thought would work well for a busy family. And also through the front door, walking straight ahead into the living room which I'm excited to share that with you as well. My color palette throughout the home, whether it's fall or spring or summer, tends to lean to more of what you would consider a probably fall aesthetic. I like lots of moody colors, rich colors, deep moody greens, ochres, oranges. I like to add a lot of texture through either a velvet drape paired with a woven shade on the window. When I decorate for fall in my home, the coziness that I think about when I think about the season for fall. I achieve that with florals, with a lot of faux stems, blankets, of course candles, but just a richness and a warmth, textiles, branches, my love for pumpkins you will see on the front porch. But when it comes to the inside of the home, I rely more on texture, color, a mixing of pattern. Just to create the warmth and coziness of the season. On the first floor, I have two small half baths. This one is located 
off of the front door when you walk in. And even though this room is small, it definitely reflects my personality and my love for vintage treasures. A rule of thumb of mine is that no room is too small not to be chocked full of vintage finds. Sometimes I forget that this room is even a restroom. This was my very first project that I ever did with wallpaper. The room used to be white shiplap. Again, I wanted to go for something moodier and painted the shiplap the same moody green, Jasper by Sherwin Williams. The wallpaper is a beautiful floral print from Mickey and Co. And again, I just love capturing that feeling of fall through a rich color palette, leaves and stems. This vintage riding hat, I love the velvet and the richness of it. The shelf was a DIY that I did. And I also have a passion for hanging great art in any room. One of the rooms that has seen the most change since the fall home tour last year is the reading room. I can't express to y'all how much I enjoy this room. If there is any room in the house that really speaks to my personality that I think you would be able to tell that that's where I spend a lot of time, that it would be this one. One of my favorite pieces of furniture is what looks like a trunk, but is actually a secretary desk. I love being able to fold up all of my work at the end of the day, hide the computer, tuck it away. The wallpaper is a new addition. William Morris is one of my favorite designers and influences a lot of my design style. This is his iconic snake's head pattern. And I think it adds so much character to the room. Most everything that you're going to see in this room is of course a vintage find from Round Top. When I have friends or neighbors come over and they walk through the house, one of the most asked questions is, where did you find this? <laughs> and my answer is, I got it in Round Top. The fall show is coming up and I'm so excited to attend again this year. This great piece of furniture over here is from Old World Antiques and Round Top stores my collection of vintage books. Again, you can see the hand scraped knotty alder used again in our fireplace mantle. I love the warmth and the richness of the wood paired against the cream stacked stone. And throughout the seasons, I'm able to transition from fall into other seasons by just changing out the color of the stems that I keep in the vases. It's 
very important to me to have furniture that's dual purpose. While this may look like a credenza or a sofa table behind this small sofa, it's actually a filing cabinet where I'm able to store everything that I need for work. Form and function is very important to me. I'm not the only one who enjoys this room. However, on most days I can find one of my daughters curled up here on the couch. And of course, my Australian Labradoodle also likes to spend a lot of time napping on the back of the couch. For a room that is open to all of the house, I had to thoughtfully consider how this wallpaper would blend with the rest of the home. And I just decided to go for it to not be scared whether or not it worked or not because the main priority for me was that I loved it and I fell in love with this wallpaper the moment I saw it. This chair, also another great find from Round Top. The embroidery on it is exquisite. Again, I have such a passion for mixing old with new. At the end of the long day or a rainy night, this is definitely a room that you will find me relaxing in. Even though we renovated this home after we flooded in 2017, it did undergo one renovation even before that. As I mentioned, this home was built in 1981. And where you see the kitchen island now actually used to be the eat-in breakfast area. and the kitchen sink was located underneath that window. The entire kitchen fit right where the kitchen table is. That was a big renovation that required just a little bit of out of the box thinking and switching the kitchen from that side of the home to the other has really opened up the view. And I couldn't be happier with that decision. One element and one of the only elements of the home that I was able to keep and refurbish after the flood was the kitchen island countertop. This is a honed granite, or they'll often call it raw granite, and it feels so velvety smooth to the touch. kitchen backsplash is another most asked question that I get. I love the ceramic tiles. And again, you will see 
the hand scraped knotty alder stair tread. I had some extra stair treads and utilized those for open shelving in the kitchen. Every night of the week, you will see my kids and I gathered around the kitchen island for meals or homework. That's where everyone gathers. As you can see, the home is long and narrow, which has created some design challenges. And I've had to get creative and break up the room into different sections, if you will. And I love this little moment and my girls love to do arts and crafts. They're very creative. And this is where they will sit almost every day after school, painting, drawing, Throughout the home, you can see that I have carried on the moody green color. And these amazing French ladder back chairs are a new addition to my home and evoke such joy. I love the sweet carved detail of the birds on each chair. I do enjoy collecting vintage art. And while this corner of the kitchen doesn't get used every day, by the kids and I, it provides ample seating when we have a lot of family over. Another design element that you will see throughout the home is the stacked stone. like the rugged texture that it adds. Our kitchen is definitely the heart of the home. And this new layout for us definitely works for a family with busy, busy kids. Moving from... This is a fun room off the kitchen that I have not yet shared with you. I turned this room into a fun arcade room for my kiddos. They are 11, eight, and seven. And I definitely want to be the home that's open to all of their friends. Somewhere fun for them to be able to hang out. Also have a desk in here so they can do their schoolwork. 
I can monitor what they're watching on the computer. This room originally was the dining room, but I've never utilized a formal dining room before. This room has been a study. It's also been a playroom when the children were little, a storage room when I didn't know where to put anything else. So it certainly felt good to clear everything out and refresh. I was able to refresh this space by just utilizing everything that I had in my own home. A great way to design on a budget is to shop around your own house. Not be afraid to move things from one room to another. And by doing so, I was able to create a fun hangout space for my kids. close by to the kitchen. And of course, when I wanna block out the noise, all I have to do <laughs> is shut the door. As I mentioned before, this opening from the reading room into the rest of the home was not here back in the 80s and this was part of our first renovation. It has certainly created a nice flow into the living room. The entire home is very long and narrow, and as I mentioned, has created some design challenges. So I've tried to overcome those challenges by breaking up the room into sections, giving my children a space to work, to be creative. This is where my girls paint, watercolor, after school and I divided up the living room with the sofa table behind the couch have some of my favorite chairs facing the kitchen so when guests come over they can face the kitchen I still get to interact with everybody It's also a great place in the morning where the kids will sit down, put on their shoes, pack their backpacks for the day. Again, in the living room, you're going to see the use of the hand scraped knotty alder on another fireplace mantle. The shiplap is also carried throughout this room and on the ceiling. This is the only room in the house that has shiplap on the ceiling and the stack stone element on the fireplace. I do like to take a few design elements and use them all throughout the home. So as you walk through room to room, they're all tied together, even though they each have their own personality. Built-in shelving and bookcases have provided a great storage, especially when the children were little, to tuck away all of the toys. And who doesn't love a good shelfie? I 
change my my shelves out throughout the season. A great design tip when you are doing a shelf styling project, take everything off. Start from scratch each time. It'll help you with a more cohesive look. More antiques. Love mixing pieces like this credenza, which is from Pottery Barn with an antique chair, some great pieces of vintage art. One thing about design that I enjoy is that there doesn't have to be any rules. There certainly shouldn't be as long as it brings you joy i think that's all that matters and i'm very particular about the items that i now bring into my home i would say my design style is eclectic i am a collector especially of vintage and a mixer of styles. Certainly takes a long time to curate a collection. But no matter how long it takes, as long as you enjoy the process. That's all that matters. Next, I'm gonna show you the main bedroom, which in this home is on the first floor. Like I mentioned before, all of our kids' rooms are upstairs. The main bedroom is just off of the living room. One of the major renovations that we did in this room came from the renovation that we did after the flood. During our first renovation in 2014, it wasn't in our budget to make any changes to this side of the house, which includes the main bedroom, our bathroom, and our closet. After the flood, however, we knew that that was the opportunity to make changes. Where you see the nightstand actually used to be the shower, and it was in a really weird triangle shape. This room was actually quite small. So we removed the shower and squared up the wall to give us more space in here. I really like the size and scale of having a grand headboard, tufted and velvet, it's so soft. And since the headboard is a really dark gray, I wanted to keep the color on the walls really light. It is a super, super light, light gray called Heron Plume by Sherwin-Williams. Again, instead of a traditional nightstand, I used two dressers on each side of the bed, which provides ample storage. I keep extra bed linens in there, books, journals, notebooks. I love having the overhead lighting above the bed. Perfect for reading at night. I'm still old fashioned. I love flipping through an old magazine.
And then just off of our bedroom, through two double doors, is our bathroom. This also saw a big renovation as it was quite small. A detail I love is this stacked wood that we made as a feature wall on the outside of the shower. Where the shower is now used to be a sunken down bathtub. How very 1980s. We removed the sunken bathtub and installed a large walk-in shower. Multiple shower heads, has a rain shower head as well. Used a combination of different tile, we have some wood, wood looking tile that you would actually use on the floor as we used as a wainscoting, some marble. We carried the, the wood decor element throughout. We were able to move the toilet to have its own private room and through those double doors is the main closet. I'll take any opportunity to put up a gallery wall. This one's particularly special to me as it represents my family, my children, and my husband. Double sinks in the bathroom, above mount sinks, which I love. We've used the same above mount sink in all of our restrooms throughout the house. Plenty of counter space. My husband may disagree since I have taken up most of it. Lots of storage. as I've mentioned before, I do have an affinity towards vintage rugs and I will put one in any room, even a bathroom. The bathroom is quite large. We were able to put a custom mini sofa in the bathroom. which might be a little unusual, but my girls can also often be found sitting here while I'm putting on makeup in the morning. It's a great spot to get dressed, put on your shoes. And honestly, sometimes I lay down here and just shut the door to get away from everything. This is a fun way to show the two-story staircase coming up the stairs. For a long time, I struggled with how to fill the space on this wall. I have a love for gallery walls, but I couldn't quite figure out the scale. And then I ordered these oversized canvases. They're 30 by 30 inches, all in black and white for a cohesive look to take up space. And it's just a family moment in the home. As I mentioned before, all of my children's rooms are upstairs. 
and at the top of the stairs is a sweet little landing. And that is where I found the new home for the Belgium dresser from the 1800s that I absolutely adore that used to be downstairs. This landing I have hung artwork that is extremely special to me and represents my children. I like to give them a framed piece of artwork on special occasions like Christmas or birthdays that kind of reflect the stage of life that we're in. And I have it all hanging outside of their doors. Just off of my children's bedrooms upstairs is a room that used to be attic space a long time ago before we even moved into the home. And I think it's funny how my children have named the, the different rooms in my home. This is what they call the sewing room, even though I don't sew anymore as much as I used to. Sometimes I do. It's really a craft space, a creative space. I'm teaching myself right now how to watercolor. I found this vintage painter's box in Round Top. I loved all the old oil paints and that this artist had painted a sweet little picture on the inside of the box. Love to decorate with vintage paintbrushes mixed in with all of my supplies. I use vintage tins, European pottery that I also got at Round Top to store my paintbrushes, mason jars for my paint water. It's just really important to me to have a dedicated space where I can sneak away and be creative. The room also functions as a space for my kids to hang out upstairs. When my son has friends come over, they will usually hook up the Xbox and game in here, or if I'm in here painting, I can definitely find my daughters curled up on the couch watching a movie. Again, my color palette, dark and moody. This color is Roycroft Bronze Green by Sherwin-Williams. A great decision that I made was to paint the ceiling and carry it all the way up Using a dark color like this, I think some would tend to steer clear of wanting to paint a ceiling, but I think that it actually makes the room look larger. Beautiful vintage rug, complete with beautiful imperfections and patches. I love the story that that tells. I do not let an imperfection in any antique whether it's a piece of furniture or a rug, keep me from bringing it home. As a matter of fact, it, it makes me want to collect it even more as it adds character. My favorite place to buy vintage drugs is the Loom House out of Wisconsin. You can find them on Instagram. Can you imagine how long it took to weave this beauty. Again, I just love to mix patterns, stripes with a vintage pillow. Lots of texture, lots of pattern. Also, a 
love for old and new. A vintage rug with chairs from Target. Gallery walls are one of my favorite things to put together. I love mixing metals and frames and even just hanging up a piece of art with a piece of masking tape. When it comes to decorating the, outs the upstairs, I should say, I just bring a few fall stems up here. Extra blankets, I'll change out the pillows for the season. Light a fall candle and enjoy a space to get creative. My son's bathroom upstairs doubles as our bath for our guest. And this is a room that is filled with sweat equity. It was all done ourselves. Where you see the see-through shower with the glass that used to be a bathtub with a wall that went all the way up to the ceiling. That was demoed and put in a glass shower to open up the space since the bathroom is smaller and long and narrow. Added a lot of texture with oversized terry cloth towels, a vintage chair with an unnecessary pillow. Quirky artwork that makes my son laugh. This vanity was custom made to fit the space. A DIY shelf with steel piping. And complete with a homemade light fixture. I love adding character to any space, no matter how big or small. Right off of the kitchen is the laundry room. And though she may be little, I still take every opportunity to dress her up in fall and fill her with vintage finds. Of course, I have a vintage rug in the laundry room for a pop of color. And to bring fall into a small space like my laundry room. A few ceramic pumpkins some fall stems. Of course, a fall scented candle. I switch out the hand towels. We were able to add a lot of character to this room by utilizing extra tile that we had from the kitchen backsplash and remnants of the granite that we also used in the kitchen. I also love creating warmth and coziness, especially in small rooms, by adding a lamp. So even in my laundry room or a kitchen, you always find a lamp to add a soft glow. And while laundry for 
three very busy and active children definitely adds up. It's a chore I don't necessarily mind in a room like this. A big thank you to Kim for sharing her stunning home today. I hope you guys loved it just as much as I did. And I have another video picked out for you right here of her tour last year. So I'll see you in that video. Bye.